Hey, what's going on? I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about my friend Joe and talk to you about something that's going on in the world that I don't think is very good for us. So my friend Joe, he's, well, he's a good guy. He's good in a bunch of different ways. He's a good athlete, kind of a meathead, I guess, like me. He, he cares about his health, and he works out, stays in good shape. He knows how to fight. He's got a bunch of physical prowess. But he's also smart, and he's curious, and he reads a bunch, and he talks to all different kinds of people all the time. He likes a lot of the things that I like, things like jujitsu and, and mixed martial arts and archery and hunting. And he's a very successful individual. He's made a bunch of money. He has some, some cool business ventures. He's been on some TV shows. And of course, he's a really funny guy. That's, I think, what he was first known for. For being funny, for being hilarious. But Joe can also be a serious guy. He can be introspective. And those are great qualities for a person to have. So... So my friend Joe is smart and athletic and rich and articulate and he's got a beautiful family and he's got a pretty cool life. It's pretty impressive. And he's always been cool to me. And he opened up his world and helped me out along the way. And, and not just me, he's helped all kinds of people, all kinds of people from all kinds of different backgrounds because, because he's a nice guy. Because <laughs> he's a nice guy with a good heart, and I've known him for a long time. I've known Joe before he was who he is. And I've seen him behind the scenes in normal situations, and he's just a genuinely nice guy with a good heart. And maybe that's why even with all of his success and all that he does for people, he's still humble. He's self-deprecating and modest and he never asks for anything in return from me. He's just a really good guy in a really good spot in life. He's the kind of guy that if you're not careful, you might become jealous of. But if you ever actually meet him, you'll realize that he's worked hard to get where he is and he's thankful for his success and he's thankful for the people that helped him along the way. Now, is Joe perfect? No. No, Joe is not perfect. I think he probably drinks too much sometimes. I think he's maybe a little more enthusiastic about psychedelic drugs than I would like him to be. He seems like he can be kind of obsessive about things, and I'm sure that can be annoying. And I'm sure that like most people, he probably loses his temper from time to time or gets frustrated or sometimes maybe he does things or says things that he shouldn't say or shouldn't do. Which is why I'm talking about my friend Joe. He, like any of us, has definitely said some things that he doesn't think he should have said. Things that upset people. Things that are offensive. Things that he said that he wished he could take back. But when you speak words, you cannot take them back. Especially when those spoken words are recorded and much of what my friend Joe says is recorded. So he said some things 
that he wished he didn't say. So what did he do? How did he handle it? Well, what he did was he said he was sorry. He said he was sorry. He didn't make any excuses. He didn't dig in and go on the attack. He didn't, he didn't point out all the other people who have said all kinds of other offensive things that they shouldn't have said. He didn't do that. Most impressive, he didn't bring up or talk about the countless examples in his own life that show the type of person he really is. And that is a generous guy, a caring guy, a thoughtful, kind, warm-hearted father, husband, and friend. He didn't point out any of that. Instead, he simply said, I was wrong. I'm sorry. So what do we do with that? What do we do with that? I can tell you that some people are not accepting that apology. And I get that. That's their right. No one has to accept an apology. But, but that does concern me. It, it concerns me to think that we live in a country or we live in a world where we can't forgive someone. We can't forgive someone who's genuinely a nice guy, a nice human being for something that they said, something that they apologized for saying. No, in this day and age, it seems that we don't forgive. Instead, we sit and we judge. We judge others. That's what we seem to do now. But I want to tell you that I think we should be careful with that attitude. Because when we judge others, oftentimes we seem to forget about ourselves being judged. We forget about our own shortfalls. Like Joe, we are not perfect. I am not perfect. No one is perfect. We do things and we say things that we regret. We miss the mark. We make emotional comments. We, we lash out when we shouldn't have. We see things the wrong way or we don't understand them correctly. We make mistakes. We all, we all make mistakes. But if we have entered a world now where there's, where there's no mercy, there's no understanding, if we've entered a world now where there's no forgiveness, where there's only judgment and destruction, well, that does not bode well for any of us. Because that judgment and that destruction will eventually visit upon your door. So, I've got an idea. And it's actually an, an ancient idea. <laughs> While, of course, we should try as people to be better and do better let us also remember that we aren't perfect. When we make a mistake, let's own it. But also we need to remember that no one else is perfect either. Let's remember that we need to understand others. We need to forgive others. And then let's hope that they can forgive us as well. Because without forgiveness, there's only judgment 
and devastation. Without forgiveness, there's only hostility. Without forgiveness, there's only anger. And life is hard enough without all that. So instead, let's help each other. Let's practice forgiveness. Let's lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. And as for my friend Joe, well, look, Some people have been trying to tear him down and shut him up for a long time. Probably his whole life. (laughs) I can only imagine his kindergarten teachers trying to get him to shut up because he does talk a lot. And he keeps talking. And I will keep listening. I will keep listening not because he's perfect, not because he's flawless, Not because he's right about everything, but actually because he's not. He's not perfect. He's not flawless. And he's not right about everything. He makes mistakes. He's a person. He's a human being like me. And like me, he's trying to learn. He's trying to grow. He's trying to be better. And like me, He's failing sometimes along the way. He's made mistakes and he will make more mistakes. And I will forgive him. Like I know he will forgive me when I inevitably mess something up myself. That's what friends do. And I'm thinking that maybe that's what we all should do. Less judgment and more forgiveness. I think it will make the world a better place. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for listening.